All right, I'm gonna show you how to measure how effective your ferrites are on noise suppression on different frequencies. So the first thing you have to do is calibrate it. So uh, let's do our stimulus, our stimulus first. So we'll go to stimulus, start, and we'll just cover the majority of the uh, ham radio, amateur radio band. So we'll go to three, or we'll go to one megahertz to uh, we'll go to 100 megahertz, or we'll go to 150 to include that 2 meter band. All right, uh, so you can see we're from 1 megahertz all the way to 150 megahertz. All right, now we have to calibrate it. So go to calibrate and just reset whatever you got and go to calibrate. All right, so first you have to do open. So uh, go ahead and take your open terminal and put it on port 1 or S11 and click open. That'll take some time. Take this one off and put in your short terminal. This one's just got that there. So that'll short it. Short that. Then we want to put in the load terminal in the port 1, S11. There's your load. And press load and tap uh, isolin. Okay, I could take this off. Uh, now, what we have to do is connect our connector. So uh, what you want to do is you need the primary on your, uh, basically if it were coax, so like this, this would be the ground and this would be your center conductor. You basically need to have access to the center conductor on uh, both ports. So I'm just using this. These are series of connectors, really. This is uh, double male SMAs that actually go into a male I guess PL259, and then this is going into an SO239 chassis. So you could do whatever you want, just as long as you have access to the center conductor. Doesn't really matter which one you go into. You'll need them both. And this one is just a regular uh, BNC connector with uh, a male SMA and I can grab that center pin there. So we'll just put this on. And we'll want to uh, take an alligator clip or whatever you got. And you could uh, take two alligator clips and then have this as your, uh, ta take this as your test wire, or you could just do it like I'm using and not use a test wire and just make your test wire your alligator clips itself, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to actually connect my alligator clip to the center pin, making sure that it's not shorted with the ground. And all right, very good. So that's there. You'll see it's going to start uh, sloping here and we want to uh, get rid of that. So we're gonna go back and we just wanna make sure that we have it selected correctly. So if we go into display, we're gonna wanna make sure our trace is on one of them and make sure that trace is, make sure you have your channel set as through. So that's what we're gonna use. And the format, uh, S21 through, just make sure you have log mag selected and go back, back, go back to calibrate and just press through like that, take some time and then press done. And you'll see once, and uh, we could save it to the first one, that'll be fine. Uh, now you'll see that it will put a sketch here of uh, one, two, 150 megahertz, and it should be relatively at zero, so that'll be fine. And then uh, I'm just gonna set it to the frequency that I care about the most, so I'll just go to 
I primarily work the 20 meter band, so I'll just go to, let's see, 14.4 megahertz, that's fine. So you can see it's showing zero decibels. So now, if we go over to our wire over here, if we go over to our wire, you could see we could put the ferrites on here. Now, if we go over to the screen, you'll see that it's showing 2.6 decibels. So there you go. That's how you check it. And if I go ahead and put another ferrite on, you'll see should increase. There it is, 5.7 decibels. Uh, now you could check which frequencies your ferrites are effective on. So if you go over to say 35 megahertz, you could see that it's 6.9 decibels, but if you go all the way up to one megahertz, you could see it's hardly effective there. Uh, if you go to the 80 meter band at 3.9 megahertz, it's somewhat effective, but uh, not much. It's at 1.9 decibels. And uh, if we go over to uh, the VHF portion at 145 megahertz, you could see it's at negative uh, 3.2, so it's somewhat effective there, but it seems to be, these ferrites in particular, uh, seem to be uh, most effective at around 30 megahertz, around the, around the 10 meter band. So uh, that's perfect. And these ferrites, I do not know the composition type. I just bought them on Amazon. They were unlabeled, the cheap ones on Amazon, and they seem to be working great on the frequencies I care about. Uh, thank you for watching.